Hi everyone and welcome to the second part of the small video series on running Windows 98 on a modern Mac. In the first video, for which I'll add a card here in case you want to watch it, I kind of covered the boring part and the detailed steps to run Windows 98 on a current M1 based or Intel based Mac. Definitely have a look at it if you want to do this yourself. This video, the second part, should be a lot more fun as we already start with a fully operational Windows 98 install as a result of that first video. I've collected a small selection of software and games which stayed in my head after all those years and tested these on the VM. I will start with a few applications and then we'll cover some games. This I guess is the most fun. Let me know in the comments what you think about the selection and memories you have of it. I can already tell you that for me it was a real trip to the past. So much stuff that I vaguely remembered and came back while making this video. Before we kick off, one small note and that is about the emulated video card. I noticed while testing software and games that the card used in the first video was not ideal. So I've played around and got a better and more performing solution for that, but I cover that in a small separate video to avoid distraction over here. You can find a link in the description if you're interested. Let's get going and we'll start with Microsoft Plus 98. Most of all, I remember the changed boot screen when this was installed on a PC. You could already see this at the beginning of this video. As a kid, for me this looked really cool. Some of the features that were in Plus 95, this is the same piece of software but for Windows 95, are already part of Windows 98 by default, like the Teams and Internet Explorer. Other than the Teams, Plus 98 also comes with a virus scanner, some games and probably the most useful compressed folders. This feature is an integration in Explorer that allows you to open compressed zip files without additional applications. Later this functionality became a part of Windows itself in Millennium Edition I believe. Plus 98 does add some additional themes, so let's check out some of those. I'm pretty sure some of you had these back in the days. Most themes are pretty flashy and most of them also include a variety of sounds. Honestly, I can't really imagine working today with so much distraction, but that's how things were done and many people actually use these on their PC. But for now, let's go back to the backup of the original look switch I took. Let's move on to the second application, or better, set of applications, and that is Office 97. Again, some fond memories here for me just seeing those logos and graphics. More importantly, let's not forget about our friend Clippy. Clippy was supposed to be there to help you. See it as a more friendly and interactive version of the help feature. Only in practice, the feature turned out to be more annoying than helpful in a lot of cases, especially if you already knew what you were doing with the Office applications. There was also the possibility to choose for another character, as you can see here. Note that this really made it work better. The 
the applications still look similar to today's versions. Take Excel here. And while we're on it, let's have a quick look at PowerPoint as well. These themes definitely didn't age very well, although they still do look familiar to me. Seeing how Outlook looked like back then, long before I would use it on an almost daily basis, even looks funny. Next up, and the last piece of software that isn't the game, is Microsoft Encarta. Instead of the need to have a full bookshelf at your home for an encyclopedia, you could have this all on one or two CDs on your PC. For sure this piece of software removed some of the last doubts some parents had at the time if they wondered if a computer would be a good thing to have in the family. It was a lot easier to search for something. And having interactive content was a bonus. I remember using this for school projects and printing things on my Epson inkjet printer. If it was working at least. Enough of these serious applications, let's have a look at some games. I won't cover all of these which I have installed here, but it can give you some ideas. Unfortunately there is no 3dfx or other 3d acceleration support, but at the same time the PC I had back then, a Pentium 100, didn't have anything like that either. Let me start with a very popular and well-known one, and that is Duke Nukem 3D. Not really a kids friendly title, but back then somehow nobody really cared and all my friends were playing this anyway. Let's rock. Damn, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. Duke Nukem 3D got released somewhere in 1996. In the game, Duke needs to prevent a classic alien invasion to Earth. Come get some. As you can see, the game runs really well using this method and is guaranteed for hours of fun. Not much more I need to tell about the game I guess, it kind of speaks for itself and I'll just let you enjoy this. to the king, baby.
The next game is as kids proof as Duke Nukem 3D, and that is Carmageddon, another classic from around the same time period. Here again the story takes place in the future. The goal of the race is to be the first to finish a track, or the most fun option of course, to destroy each of your enemies. Each checkpoint, opponent hit or pedestrian or animal you kill will get you additional time. Today the graphics might look dated, but that doesn't make it less fun to play. I even noticed that I spent way too much time in the game while trying to record some material for this video. As with Dude Nukem 3D, performance while playing this game on the VM is excellent, as you can see. Something a bit calmer now, Team Hospital. This is a simulation game where the goal is to build and maintain a hospital. It was the successor of the popular game Team Park with the same concept. The idea might sound a bit boring at first, but the way this game is made and the humor which is present everywhere makes it really fun to play. We need to start with some basics, like a reception desk, seating, plans... Then we need to build rooms, hire personnel and so on. The further you get in the game, the more things you need to manage to treat the different diseases which can get discovered in your research department and then treated at your hospital. We can see an invisible man getting cured here by a nurse at the pharmacy. And also here a guy that has the bloated head disease, being cured. This kind of shows the spirit of the game. Nurse required in pharmacy. 
When you manage to keep the reputation of the hospital at a decent level and increase the value, you can move on to the next level. Last game that I'm going to cover a bit deeper was very popular, Unreal Tournament or UT99 referring to the year of its release. UT99 is a first person shooter and another game that takes place in the future. As the story goes, at that time fighting to death was allowed. There are different game modes like Capture the Flag, Assault, Last Man Standing and Deathmatch. Seeing back these maps makes me realize that I still know the floor plan of almost all of these completely in my head. I don't want to know how much of my time went into this game in the past to be honest, I guess better not to think too much about it. Let us launch a deathmatch to just see how this runs. We were also playing this a lot at some local LAN parties and there were even competitions for Unreal Tournament. Although 3D acceleration is not supported, Using software rendering, the game runs fairly well. I'm sorry, did I blow your head apart? A popular way of playing this game, at least at LAN parties and online, was using Instagip, where a single hit of the shock rifle kills and gives you a point instantly. Getting good at this required good reflexes, eye-hand coordination and obviously lots of training. First blood. For the rest of the video, I'll just go through some of the remaining games without many comments. Just seeing these back after all that time does enough if you ask me. Enjoy the rest of the video and make sure to subscribe and like if you're into this kind of videos and topics.
Thanks a lot for watching and hope to see you back here soon.